Okay, in this video we're going to um, graph some inequalities with AND in them. So here's example 1, example 2, example 3, and then example 4. So on example 3 and 4 we'll have to solve them. And these will have um, funny answers that we'll need to go over. Unusual, let's say. Okay, so watch out for that. So example 1, we're going to graph negative 3 is less than x and x is less than or equal to 3. Um, press pause and see what you can come up with. See if you can graph that on the uh, on a number line first of all. And now I'll do it. So um, basically, what I like to do is I'll look at this one. X is less than or equal to two, and I'll read it this way. Okay, uh, from left to right, X is less than or equal to two. So uh, this, of course, is all numbers you know numbers less than or equal to 2 and then when I look at this one I like to read it from here and then in that direction so I start here and I read it that way so I go x is greater than negative 3 so numbers greater than negative 3 and numbers less than or equal to uh, 2 so basically we're looking for all numbers that are less than or equal to 2 and at the same same time greater than negative 3. Does that make sense? So x represents all numbers less than or equal to 2 and of course that can simply be written like this instead of all numbers just write x and go less than or equal to 2 and then greater than negative 3. So please write, I mean practice it, write, write down like that. That's how it can also be written just so we know. And um, so as a line graph then less than or equal to 2 we would of course have a um, remember parentheses means um, not included in the set whereas the square brackets means is included okay so put that up there so you've got a key so less than or equal to 2 means the set does include 2 and includes all numbers less than or equal to 2 so, so less than 2 so equal to 2 and less than 2, so basically from 2 and then in this direction less than 2 like 1 and 0 and then numbers greater than negative 3 would be negative 2, negative 1 and all the way up basically once again to you know negative 2.999 you could think of and so basically all the way up to negative 3 but not including negative 3 so up to here. Does that make sense? So your set goes from negative 3 to 2 this is included, this is not and when we write an interval, as an interval, I'd like to put down min, comma, max. So please write down what's the minimum number in this set and then what's the maximum number in the set. The minimum number is? Well, it's negative 2.99999, you could think of. But, you know, we write negative 3 but not including negative 3. So negative 3 with parentheses, that's the minimum limit, let's say. And the maximum number is actually the number 2, and 2 is included. So all the way up to the actual number 2, right? 2 is included. Anyway, that's the interval. So see if you can press pause and do example 2. Can you graph this? And then can you give the interval? And then please, you know, skip through the video and see if we, see if you got the, right, the, the same answer as me. Hopefully I'll get the right answer. So again, x represents all numbers. So we're looking for all numbers that are less than zero and at the same time if you read it from this way to this way it says x is greater than or equal to negative four. All numbers greater than or equal to negative four and then if you read it from here to here it says x is less than zero. All numbers less than zero. Okay. So here's zero, here's negative four. We want to be less than zero so negative 1, negative 2, these guys, right? And is 0 included? Not included, so we use parentheses, right? Less than 0, and greater than or equal to negative 4, what, what will, will we need, need for that? Parentheses or square bracket? We well, need square bracket, and in which direction? Is it going to be like that? Right, so all these guys, all numbers in between negative 4 and 0, 
including negative 4. So write down your interval. And again, I like to do min, comma, max. And then I do the interval. So go ahead and do the interval. Minimum number is negative 4, right? And the maximum number is 0. Now what's included and what's not included? Negative 4 is included, 0 is not, right? So it's just a really quick way of saying every single number um, greater than or equal to negative 4 and less than 0, written like that. I mean, or, or, you know, this is the inequality, this is the line graph, this is the interval. But I mean, the interval, you know, this is the min, that's the max, and it's all numbers in between. Okay, example three, by all means press pause and try example three and then check your answer with, with what I got. Okay, now I'm going to do example three. First of all, I need to solve for x. Okay, so what I like to do is subtract two first of all. And will I be left with 4x or will I be left with negative 4x on the left hand side? 4x or negative 4x? Place your bets now. In fact, I'll be left with negative 4x, right? Because negative doesn't disappear. I mean, that's, that, this is a negative 4x, so that goes there. And it's greater than 10 minus 2 is 8. Now, to get x by itself, I need to divide by negative 4 on both sides. So on the left hand side, negative divided by negative gives positive. 4 over 4 is 1, so basically I have positive 1x on the left, positive 1x, which is just x. On the right hand side, it's positive over negative gives negative. 8 over 4 gives 2. Now tell me, what happens with the inequality sign? Can you remember? The inequality sign, I have just divided by a negative, and I need to change direction. Do you remember that? Okay, so it's x is less than negative 2. Now press pause and do this one and then see if you got the same thing as I'm going to get. Okay, now I'm going to try it. So I need to solve for x, so I need to add 1 to both sides and I get 5x is less than or equal to 15. Now I've got to divide by 5 on both sides and I get x on the left and 3 on the right. What happens to the inequality side? It's a kind of a trick question. A lot of students mix it up. They will change the direction in this case. You do not. When you divide by a negative, you change direction. When you divide by a positive, it stays the same. Why? Let me show you really quickly, just so you remember, uh, in, ca in case it, you've forgotten. If you have just two numbers in an inequality, for example, um, negative 10 less than uh, 15, okay? Let's write it down twice, really quickly, just so we can get this. I'm going to divide both sides here by um, a negative 5. I'm, I'm going to divide both sides here by a positive 5. See what happens in each case. Press pause and calculate everything there. What I mean is negative over negative gives positive, doesn't it? 10 over 5 gives 2. So this is going to be positive 2, right? So calculate everything and then see how your inequality signs should go. Press pause and do that. You need to do it for yourself to really understand it. Okay. 15 over negative 5 gives me a negative 3. Now, what's bigger or lesser? 2 or negative 3? 2 is greater than negative 3, isn't it? So when I divide it by a negative, the inequality sign changed direction. When I divide it by a positive, what happened? Negative 10 over 5 gives negative 2. 15 over 5 gives positive 3. How should the sign go now? Which is lesser, which is greater? Well, 3 is greater, so that gets the gap. 2, negative 2 is lesser, that gets the little point, and so the inequality stays the same, right? So when you divide by a positive, it stays the same direction. It's only dividing by a negative, that's the only time it changes direction. Adding and subtracting, it stays the same as well, of course, right? It's just dividing by a negative that you change the direction of the inequality. Okay. So in any case, press pause and, oh sorry, we're not done yet. Duh. We have x is less than negative 2. And, don't forget the and, x is less than or equal to 3. Interesting. We have to try and graph that, okay? 
So if I was to do x is less than negative 2, here's negative 2, it would be all of these numbers, right? Less than negative 2. If I was to do x is less than or equal to 3, I would start at 3, and I would do all of these numbers. Now, how am I going to graph this if it says I want all numbers that satisfy this and this? Do you see what I'm trying to say? The answer must satisfy this and this. So what is the answer? The answer, well, we're going to graph it first. To set, if, if numbers are going to satisfy being less than negative 2 and at the same time less than or equal to 3, well, I'll show you what won't work. 0, look at 0. Is that part of the answer? 0 is less than 3, and that satisfies this one, but it, does it also satisfy this one? 0 does not work in here, because 0 is not less than negative 2, see? For, uh, same with 1, same with 2. Of course, the number 5 isn't in either set. But when we see and, the numbers must be in both sets, right? It's kind of like the intersection, this set intersecting with this set. And so the answer is that we've got to graph all of these guys. Because everything that satisfies this, everything here is in both sets. I mean, all of these numbers are, are also in here, right? So the answer as an inequality, funny enough, is is simply x is, or sorry, x is less than negative two. But as a as a line graph, that's what it looks like. Now can we give the this as an interval? Min, comma, max. And notice this line graph is going from negative two all the way down to negative infinity, right? So as an interval the minimum value is always on the left. The maximum value is always on the right. The minimum is negative infinity. A much smaller number than negative 2. That's minimum. This is smaller. Negative 2 is a negative, but it's a lot bigger than negative infinity. Would you prefer to be in debt by negative 2 or be in debt by negative infinity, right? So, this is not included, neither is that. Okay, press pause and try example 4. Okay, now I'll do it. We've got to solve for x, subtract 1 from both sides, and we get 3x is greater than or equal to 6. Then we divide by 3. Dividing by 3, we get x here, we get 2 here. What happens to the inequality? Does it change direction? It does not. We divided by a positive number, the inequality stays the same direction. Solve this one. Press pause and solve this one. Now I'll do it. We've got to subtract 5. Do we get x on the left hand side or negative x? We get negative x, right? And we subtracted. Inequality stays the same direction. 8 minus 5 is 3. Now how do I solve it? I don't have x, I have negative x. I need x, right? Well, don't you think of that as negative 1x? Negative 1 times x and then divide both sides by a negative 1 giving x on the left, and what do you get on the right? 3 over negative 1, negative 3. What happens to the inequality sign? We divide it by a negative. It changes direction. And we also have the word and in between both of these guys. So we have x is greater than or equal to 2, and x is less than negative 3. Hmm, interesting. x is greater than or equal to 2, that would be these guys from 2 all the way up that way. X is less than negative 3. That would be these guys from negative 3 down here, right? What numbers satisfy this set and this set? Give me one number that is greater than 2 and less than negative 3. One number. Can you do it? Let me see. Let's take the number 4. The number 4 is greater than 2. That is in this set. 4 is greater than 2. 
Is 4 also less than negative 3? Is 4 in this set? Nope, that's not going to work. How about the number 6? That's greater than 2, but it's not less than negative 3. Right, that's not going to work either. How about the number negative 5? Oh, negative 5 is less than negative 3. It works in here, obviously. But is negative 5 in this set? No, this set's over here. Negative 5 is, is negative 5 greater than 2? Nope. So any of the numbers that are in this set are not in this set, obviously, right? Any of the numbers over here, they're not in here and they can never, they never, they're not going to be. So are there any numbers that are common to this set and this set? No. So the answer is um, nothing, basically. What, what do we represent nothing by in math? Do you remember that funny, uh, it's not zero, and I'll tell you why it's not zero. Zero is a number. Zero. Is zero the answer? Is zero in this set and this set? The number zero isn't in this set or this set. The number zero is in nothing, is in neither. So zero is not part of the answer. So nothing is not represented by the number zero. It's represented by a, a circle and a line through it means nothing, okay? Or the empty set or the null set. And, um, as an interval, uh, we can't do one. So the interval is uh, no interval, basically. There is no interval. Nothing. No interval. And of course, we can't do a graph. There's there's no there's nothing we can put on the line graph. So the line graph is just we just leave it empty. Okay.